see it, but it's about to drop in three seconds. And teams are out for the races. So, it looks like CSU is spreading out for a five point. Whereas, uh, Big Dogs, I, I saw them all funnel towards bot side. Right now, we do have five of war on, so give it a moment here. But this could be interesting. With the with the five point fan, if Big Dogs is opting to invade, they're going to find someone alone. It looks like uh, Rachnar did spot out the Pantheon. He's falling back, as he should. Um, Jin's retreating outside of the red buff area. And CSU answers with an invade of their own, so that's good. Get some vision down. If they're going to just take the red, you know, they might as, a CSU might as well do the same. Um, it looks like Kane maybe was going to start topside anyway, so this works out for him. Not sure. The five point could have easily went down to a, a Kane red start, but I'm not sure. Uh, either way, they're looking to handshake. Uh, they're, they're red buffs, but Big Dogs actually didn't opt to stick to the invade, so Kane's actually going to get a buff lead here. And potentially a three, you know, three three buffs to one, which would be insane for him. Yeah, or he could also opt to start Raptors of uh, big dogs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, either way, I think he's going to take the entire top side while he's up there. So, you know, if Kha'Zix realizes this, I don't, you know, somehow he may just split the map. We'll see. I don't think there's any way that you will know that there's no vision. Yeah, yeah, there is. A, you're right. It just takes some serious intuition. Or intuition. <laughs> it does look like farming, yeah. will be starting on Raptors, going right into the enemy red buff. Yep, so he has taken over that entire enemy topside jungle. Kha'Zix has opted for a full bot side clear of at least on his loose side right now. So he will move up from the top side and find that there's nothing left. I expect Kane will just rotate to his blue buff, take that. So if Kane, uh, Kha'Zix wants to invade and take anything, he will walk all the way back down and then through uh, and red side. And by then, Kane will be down there as well. So this is looking at, like a really good start for CSU from an economy-wise. Here they are flashing up again from the early uh, up from the Pantheon. That that's exactly what we were talking about in the game. Like if Pantheon jumps on this gen, he either has to block or die. Yeah, we did see a brief trade in the mid lane there. Kane's looking for a gank. Uh, Zoe flashes onto Syndra, she will sleep. I don't see much coming from that though. Oh, the ignite comes back out. Kha'Zix with the counter here. And he comes in with the counter gank, just scaring away any Kha'Zix, any little bug trying to run around. I'll fight Izum topside, so that poke is going to fall off here. He does have two Corrupting Potions available. I don't know if that's enough to sustain him all the way through. Junglers are face-checking each other here. Kha'Zix gets chunked out right away in his forced retreat. Yep. All right, so it's calmed down a little bit. As you mentioned, you know, that Pantheon engaged bot side, Jin is without a flash, so if he if Pantheon can find a stun through Black Shield, or but rather before the Black Shield hits, that could be a very easy first blood bot side. And we did see uh, it doesn't look like Malphite's been called yet either, so finding hits. Looks like there is a 3v2 fight in the top lane, another fight in the bot side here. We got two things going on at once. They are looking for the kill on the Morgana bot lane. Lucian flashes forward and dies. I don't think there's any situation that works, but we're back topside here. Kha'Zix is being chunked out. The flash forward denied by the Camille. Oh, that is so close to becoming a uh, kill top lane to run this Kha'Zix. Yeah, absolutely. That was a pretty good deny uh, uh, you know, by the Camille there, but also maybe even greedy uh, a commit there. But Malphite, unkillable with his, his, his innate tankiness. 
You really have to recall. That's the thing with with this Panthea or this uh, Malphite build is that you want to constantly be applying the poke pressure. If you end up in a situation where you're stuck in lane with no mana, you're just gonna get outscaled like crazy. So you gotta manage those recalls correctly. This is a really good spot for Camille to be in. We do see a pause come out. <coughs> yeah, and let's uh, break down the map state a little bit here. First strike, I believe, is coming up in the, about the next thirty seconds. And, um, which is going to be very impactful. I feel like first Drake can really snowball your lead into a, uh, into something a lot bigger for a team. So we're going to be looking at bot lane probably in the next about minute to minute and a half. Look, uh, teams looking for the first Drake. Yeah, I would say that, you know, big dogs with, I feel like their bot lane is more explosive, stronger, and, you know, look look for, uh, you know, red red side here to, to be fighting for that. But after we just watched, you know, uh, Rev LOL kind of run it down into the tower there for that aggressive uh, take onto, onto Morgana, I don't think there's a situation that works out. Uh, he must have saw something I didn't. Uh, but, but with that gold swing down there, I'm not sure what, you know, if they should have the confidence just to take these dragons at this point. I do feel like with the Syndra mid, with the Lucian Pantheon, they do have the priority down there. They still very well could. Um, I'm just a little concerned. And with Kha'Zix losing, you know, his his top side, right, being only having one side of the jungle available to him and being forced to recall, he's going to be behind as well. So I don't know if the team that should be getting these early dragons is going to get it, which is which is great. Uh, for the side of CSU if they do opt for the early ones and even if they don't if they play top side to Herald You know, they don't have to worry about the dragon timer Yeah, that's uh, exactly what you said All right pause has ended we're back to farming similar top lane Camille looks for the chunk I guess you take that tower shot. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. This 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 Malphite is needs a recall He's gonna get though Yep, and there it is. But oh my god. <laughs> the Malphite Q lasts long enough to kill the Camille. That is tragic. Alright, one for one, I guess. I mean Camille will take that. Camille will outscale and you know Malphite loses some some minions in the process, so it is a net positive, but still yikes. <laughs> that is unfortunate you hate it. Yeah. You hate to see a big stun coming out in the Zoe. Just a chunk. Midlanders are not level 6 yet, so it doesn't look like Syndra can look to transition that into a kill, but good damage nonetheless. Keeping that Zoe around the half HP mark, because as we approach level 6, we do see a cheeky bush snipe onto Mudkip. Gets blown up right away. Not much he can do. The flash is still down from that early trade. Yeah, that, uh, that is some cheese and GM right there. Showing yeah, that you just have with, with, lane dominance. Yeah, and with that pick, you know, the, I was talking about how I feel like Big Dog should be getting these early dragons, but because of the way the early game went, I don't think they can. That immediately gives them control of the bot side again. They do look to take a dragon right away. We do see a fight coming in on the mid lane. So he does have Ignite available. Hits the Q sleep, chunks out Syndra. This could potentially be a very easy kill for her with the ghost pop. She does kill. Um. Sentra relatively easily. I'm not sure if that was Ghost. I did see the moon speed come out, though. That might have just been her W. But either way, it looks like a pretty easy kill for Zoe. That is, you know, obviously not what we want to happen with a high-pressure uh, kill laner such as Syndra. You don't want her to be the one dying. Yeah, you do not want to have Syndra be dying. It is just not a good spot to be in. Syndra is going to be one of your carries this game, and having her die early on, Missing out on probably a wavish of CS. Unfortunate. Yep, and especially when you look at a champ like Zoe, I feel like that champion is going to scale way better, in, or way better into the late game as this goes on. So it's just really, really, really happy for CSU. Now, Kha'Zix does walk into his top side. He gets to clear his first top side of the game. I'm sure he's jazzed about that. Takes his first red buff of the game. Um, he's approaching level 6, but Kane already there. Yep, Kane, ready to uh, go for a lane gank down here, bot side. Playing the alcove, they're looking, but Syndrome is coming. They don't know he's there yet. They're going to look for the Pantheon, but Kane timed his damage. 
while the uh, shield was still going out and was forced to use ulti to secure the kill. Jin barely lives, doesn't die to the, the stun out by Syndra. Culling is used, E4, but doesn't really mean anything. At this point, Zoe has rotated down, the play's over. So tragic, Syndra almost got a kill there, and it was almost a little a little scary. The Kane was forced to ulti because he didn't time his W right. He His W got blocked by the Pantheon, the Pantheon E. Even though you saw it coming out first, so a little bit missed time there. Of course, he's ultimate, but ultimately, CSU doesn't lose anything. Yeah, they don't really. Uh, they don't lose anything out of that trade. It is net positive for them, and I feel like that is just the showing that there is a bit of a skill gap here, despite the rank discrepancies. Yeah, I, I would argue that I would give. If we're, we're going to talk about rank briefly. It, I think Big Dog's on it had the average, the higher average, but I do think CC is actually much closer than that. I do think it's the skills on par. We do see another yeah. gank coming in by Kane right away. They thought, hey, you were just here. Pantheon Sun comes right out, trying to chunk out the Kane, and they do kill him. They trade one for one so far. It's gonna be a double kill. Now this is where if Kane timed his W correctly in that first gank, he'd still have ultimate available and he lives there and it's a two for not. Either way, two for one, we take those if you're CSU. It is a, a good repeat gank. Well well done by the Kane. Uh, they do set up their bot lane to start taking control because, like I mentioned, I do feel like Big Dogs has the stronger bot side early, which means early dragons, as you alluded to, being really important. Um, so getting bot side a little bit of an advantage here means that they can actually fight over those dragons. Yeah. And, uh... We will see, um, excuse me for all the ums, but the top side will most likely be getting a little bit of priority soon too with Rift Herald spawning in the next few minutes. Yeah, we do have an Infernal Dragon to 130, so all eyes top side once that is down. Um, Malphite is reaching a point with the tab. We do see a stun come out, potentially a fight. Nope, nothing. Kha'Zix did invade top side, take the Raptors away. But as I was saying, we with with Malphite hitting Tabby uh, Bambies, he is going to be, he has this point, even if Camille is a little ahead, where he's still stronger in the early mid game, as long as he's not too far behind. Um, so they can look just to take the, the Herald still off of that uh, if CSU wants to do so. Despite losing topside, we do see a gank coming out. Hexic Ultimatum is available, used right away in the mouth fight. He can still alt away, flash out, alt out. He is gone. Really good black shield block. Another repeat gank by the Kane. He does have ultimate available. They kill Lucian right away with the TP channel by the Camille to help out her team. It looks like she will pick up a kill on Jin, and Kane is forced out. With Camille's, uh, heck, you know, her E coming up, I don't know if he gets away here. He doesn't have flash either. So I, I like the focus spot here. It looked really good. It was a beautiful black shield block. I Camille messes up the flashy. It's looking a little dicey. We do pick up the flash on Zoe. I don't think anything will happen. So Camille goes for the big flashy play, fumbles it. CSU comes to back up their boy. He gets out. All right. So a bit of a, a scuffle on the bot side. But I also saying really, really good black shield to block the Pantheon stun there. You, know, you, you mentioned look for that. If they're able to do so, Pantheon can't do much. And we just saw it. So let's see if, if Arkanar can do that more. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, mid lane, a little bit of a scuff. Uh, yeah, well, a little scary there. Uh, you know, Cinder doesn't have the ultimate available, so so he isn't too worried. She doesn't have that flash, but if she eats another Q, she's got a recall. And she sticks around for another five seconds. She could just die from a stun. Kane is ganking here. He does not have ultimate available, so if the stun hits. He can't go forward. Pantheon alt bot. Mudkip is super far forward. Pantheon flashes forward to guarantee the stun. Mudkip's running in the tower here. And there's not much you can really do at this point. Either die to tower or die to pantheon. So somehow ended up a little too far forward. I'm not sure what the disconnect there was. Morgana was much farther back. Yeah, that was a bit of a misplay by Jin. Getting a little bit too greedy in lane. Not knowing where his lane partners are. Probably assumed that they backed. But obviously did not. Place and over the I, bot side. Camille, yep, go on. And I also feel like right after Jen, 
got killed by that early game cheese in the bush by Krugs. He needs to look out for any plays that they could be making, any fake backs. Because this yeah. seems like the team that would do that. Yeah, when you're playing against uh, yeah, bush wookie like that, as I, I call it, you gotta be extra cautious. Especially when you're playing against globals and stealth assassins like Kha'Zix. If you're an ADC player, you gotta be cowering in fear and questioning every step you take. Oh, a face check with Morgana into the bot bush, blown up by the Pantheon damage. Stopwatch to try to buy some time. I don't know if it matters. Zoe is here, though, to trade. Does hit the Q on the Pantheon, which means another traded kill. Zoe's looking to extend the fight onto Lucian. Curtain Call's opened up. He, he flashes out. He's still alive. I don't know if this will translate into an additional kill. So right now, it looks like one for one. So it looked a little scuffed there. Face checks the, the Pantheon Lucian. Gets blown up right away, but gets the stopwatch off. Gets the exit cue as Death you know, hits the Morgana, and they actually trade one for one there. Camille looks for a little bit of force trade. Doesn't really mean anything. He's still too tanky. This is what I'm talking about. Despite, you know, the Malphite being down in plate gold and in kill gold, he's still chilling. It doesn't matter if uh, Camille wants to throw her, you know, her face at the Malphite. It doesn't really matter the first part of mid game here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Malphite is definitely someone that can keep his own in lane due to his tankiness. Uh, that Alton was a stun by the, 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 the Syndra, but immediately... Oh, this might just get turned around with that burst. Flash comes out, so the, the binding does not connect. So that would have been tragic. You get a really beautiful start into RE on the Syndra there. Looks like a free kill on the Zoe. <laughs> you get turned on by the binding sleep. Luckily, the Flash came out just in time. Binding doesn't connect onto the Pantheon. Kane is down here. He has opted for Red Kane. He already has a transformation as well, so he's very scary. <coughs> yeah. And I'd just like to talk a little bit about items here for a minute. Uh, Kane yeah. decided to go for the Gore Drinker. Uh, gives him a lot of sustain. Oh, but it looks like there is going to be a bit of a yeah, tough sword. Sword. I don't think anything happens here. Yep, so it looks like we get to breathe a little longer. So what you you're saying something about Gore Drinker here. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of sustain onto that that Kane pick, he's going to be hard to kill for sure. Yeah, but I'm the Kha'Zix opting for the Eclipse. There's basically a few items that you can go. You can go for the Eclipse or you can go for the Prowler's Claw. We do see another bush looking play by the Pantheon. They blow up more, but it doesn't matter. She's able to get the CC off, and he just turns around into a two for naught. Kane was there the whole time. <sighs> Man, it's tragic. They're, they're, they're on the front of these plays, but they... It keeps going sour for them. They do the bot play and they get turned on one for one <laughs> in the bot bush. And then they do the alco bush and same thing again, except this time they get nothing in return. They're looking for the Malphite. Camille does have ulti available, but she's not close enough. They do use the Herald to get first tower topside. So, I mean, at least they get something in trade here. But, you know, it's unfortunate that Big Dogs is losing these fights. They're up in Dragon, so I do feel like they should have got all the early Dragons, which they did. They're down a lot of kill gold. At least it seems that way. Uh, they are CSU is up two thousand. Yeah, that is uh not even two thousand. About a uh, little bit less, but uh, that's okay. Just shy of. We do see Panther into here. the mid lane. He has always super pincer trying to trade the one for one. It's really close, and she does. So that's awesome. You get three-man Pantheon ult to use, and you still come out one for one. It's really good, but the downside is dragon spawning. Uh, you really want to be there for that, but at the same time, both mid laners are out, so it's still an even playing field. Pan or Malphite does TP into bot lane. He does not have ultimate available, though, which is crucial for this. You know, mm, we'll see what happens. I think this is going to be the Kane show. If he can get in and land a really good W, they're solid. They're looking to turn the Malphite. They don't want him to ultimate. Literally, no, he doesn't have it. Kane does engage. Good knockup onto the ADC. Hexag ultimate does come out. They do kill the Kane there. He should have said as well. But Camille, I think, just wins this fight for the team. Without the Malphite ulti available, there's not much they can do. They need to get walked over. So, yeah, that, oh, yeah. that Kane knockup was all right. But you needed to hit multiple enemies there. Not just solution. Without them ult that Malphite ulti available, it was a really hard team fight to execute. Yeah, and really the main issue there was uh, the Malphite. He was out of position. He was not with the team for most of the fight. He didn't have his ultimate up. 
So, you can't really blame him for not having his ultimate up when he used it earlier, but his positioning was a little whack. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be posturing for a flank when you don't have ultimate available. Because that's, I mean, the enemy team thinks you do, and then they immediately turn on him, like, hey, we don't want you to, to engage before your team is quite on top of us yet. Luckily for uh, the side of Big Dogs, Malphite LC wasn't even up. So this, ooh, big chunk into Zoe. Ulti is available in Sintra. If she can connect, she just dies, but Lucian will just clean it up. Morgana Binding does connect. I don't think that really amounts to anything. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Despite CSU, I feel like winning. Malphite LC solo onto the, the Kha'Zix there. I think he's just going to die. That was very interesting. Another fight forward. Lucian extends onto the enemy bot lane here. CSU is just kind of getting walked over. Kane with the flash Q forward. I don't think this really turns into anything. Since Sun should just come out and he's going to die as well. Oh man, this is tragic for CSU. Another ace. Yeah, just solo plays across the board. You see the Malphite solo ulti onto Kha'Zix when their team is right there. I mean, I don't think there's a situation that ever is a kill. Even if the CSU team, or we're not CSU, but the Big Dogs team isn't in position, if Kha'Zix has ulti there, he just presses R and buys his team time to get to him to back him up. I don't think that ever works. And then we see Kane do a flash hero play, does nothing, then ults in the back line, and then he just gets Sintra's ton kill. And then Camille comes up the back end and cleans up the, you know, the gen. So, uh, unfortunate. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's very unfortunate, and it's starting to show that uh, that CSU is just playing a little bit sloppy right now. She, they are trying to make solo plays where they can't make solo plays yet. Yeah. I mean, prop, props to Big Dogs, I mean, for capitalizing those mistakes. But it definitely looks like CSU is choking a bit. Um, now, Soul Point for Big Dogs, they're just going to play to that, I would imagine. It is Air Soul. Uh, denying that from Malphite, so he's unable to get a little more ulti, you know, CDR is, is definitely good. We do see a sleep. Huge chunk onto the, the Syndra. Oh, Pantheon ulti to turn. Look for something. Beautiful binding in the back in there. Well done by Rachinar. I don't... I don't think you can do anything there, bud, with the Pantheon Sun. He just kind of plays over, plays over. I didn't even see that binding. That was a really, really well timed. Oh, I completely agree with you. And, uh, yeah, some new items coming up. Lucian going to be on two items. Jin going to be on one. Zanya's Hourglass coming out from Morgana first. Eclipse on Pantheon. Okay, and okay. Divine Thunderer on Camille. This is going to start to be pretty scary on the Camille. I have seen Camille's go from 0-7 to carrying a game as soon as they get Divine Thunderer. Yeah, Malphite's definitely a matchup to build it too. And the grasp means if she has that proc up, it's gonna it's gonna hit pretty hard. Uh, we see a potential fight happening. Camille tries to get things started. They do disengage. Pantheon's hunting. I don't. think... I think anything happens here though. They managed to get out. Malphite was nowhere near though, so that fight blew up right there. It could have been a little sketch. Binding does connect onto the Pantheon. Shield is blown. And again, nothing happens. So we do have Dragon to 120. It looks like teams are wrestling to get Dragon Control. They want to get some vision out so they can get an early reset and, you know, reset their base so you have even more wars with wars already placed. Yeah, and so far, this mid game. Has been, has has been a little bit one-sided for the side of Big Dogs. Big Dogs have been capitalizing over the CSU mistakes more than uh, CSU can capitalize on any Big Dog mistakes. Yeah, I haven't really seen. I mean, the the mis Honestly, I don't even know if Big Dogs has made too many mistakes to begin with. I feel like they've tried some proactive plays, which it looked like they were gonna, you know, win, and then it just backfired. Um, but yeah, definitely CSU is made a bunch of mistakes and big dogs have capitalized on them we do have dragon spawning in 30 teams are posturing for control we're about to see a fight here uh potentially before the the dragon spawns unless big dogs is okay with giving up river control it looks like they they recognize that they just they want to group up first so okay no fight quite yet so dragon looks like it may just spawn they are stacking bush. They need to rotate that Malphite over there. This would be a perfect, right there, four-man ulti if he was in position. Big, big Syndra ulti. 
Malphite ulti comes in, hits three people. This might be salvageable, but that Syndra E into R was huge. And I don't think it really matters. Backline is chunked out, though. Kane is full HP, as is Zoe. If they can, can you know, catch the Lucian here, I think that's just a dragon for the side of CSU, finally. But a split fight going on here. Kane does come back over to help out the Zoe. But because they split there, Zoe got chunked out, and it's really hard for Zoe to fight. Sleep does connect onto the Kha'Zix. Kane is trying to stay alive, but does not have ultimate available. Oh, man. Again, like, they look kind of good for CSU, but they, they split up. Lucian just was happy to beat on the Zoe 1v1. And then Kane realized he had to go back over, but then it was too late. Without ultimate available, he couldn't sustain up that, that fight 1v3. And it looks like it's just going to be Dragon Soul. TP co comes in for, from the uh, Camille, it looks like. Maybe that's Syndra? No, no, that is Camille. They're trying to steal with the curtain call. I don't really think it matters with Smite available on the Kha'Zix. And there it is. Pantheon ults in. It might just straight up solo the Jin. Yeah, that was a uh, questionable play of Jin kind of going in into a position where Pantheon can easily ult him. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think you try to steal. I mean, you don't want them to have soul point. It's unfortunate. That damage is pretty surprising. Pantheon caught with his pants down. Hex Hex ultimatum gets used. See you later. Yeah. yeah they're just kind of walking. And, Ooh, huge chunk of Zoe out of nowhere. Big flash forward by the Camille. Finding does connect onto Lucian. He just gets executed by the tower. They're still fighting. Tower falls. This means that we got to do the walk forward here. And CSU should just get walked over. K does not have ultimate available. He is healing up a ton, but it shouldn't matter in the end. Yeah, Very that's the time when uh, you really need to use Gore Drinker. When it's those uh, 1v3 plays, you can really outheal what they do with a, easel, a uh, nice Gore Drinker active. Yeah, it's one of those situations, though. Like, if you're in a long fight, do you just sit on your Gore Drinker the whole time waiting for the perfect opportunity? Or do you just get it off at a point in the fight for the extra damage? Or is the damage negligible enough to just always warrant waiting for the heal? It's... A tough call because I always and when I when I'm a top laner, so when I use that item on some champs I play, I can I still think of it as Tiamat, right? So I'm like, okay, I want to use it for damage, but then at the same time, you're like, no, you need to use it for the explosive sustain in the fight. So you know, it is. I feel like it's a little hard to tell for some players, you know, early in preseason here when the optimal time is to use it. But definitely a huge score oh, yeah. drinker sustain would have, you know, <laughs> potentially just one king the fight right there. Give him a little gold. I don't know if it means much for CSU in the long term right now. This game state looks a little rough. Yeah, it's looking a little bit rough for CSU. They need to uh, really play a little bit safer. There, There is Cloud Soul already for uh, Big Dogs, which is not advantageous. And... See, I'm not even going to cast that because... Who cares if you hit the Q in the sleep on the, on the Pantheon? You're not going to kill him. Big Dogs is way too ahead right now. If they went for that, that just means they just get ran over in the jungle by Big Dogs. They got to know where everyone is with 100% confidence. Have Malphite ready with the gas pedal nearby and just blow everybody up, hopefully. <laughs> Which is interesting because they are a poke comp, right, CSU? So I think the only way this works, Malphite gets an insane ulti into an insane, like, three, four-man uh, King W on top. And that will give them the damage they need to win that fight. But it's just really hard to find that. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for CSU to come back. But they just need to find the right place, find the overextensions, find when uh, big dogs get a little bit greedy. Absolutely. Eyes are on Baron, it looks like, for CSU. Trying to get some vision down. I mean, they don't have map control, so it'd be nice to know if Big Dogs will start it so they can just take it. They're actually trying to see if they'll face check them. They're actually being proactive here. Big Dogs is not in position to help their team quite yet, but Camille does E out and sidesteps the King W. Looks like that will buy enough time for Big Dogs to regroup here. Camille's looking to start the fight, get some chunk out. Malphite ulti onto two. Calling on the side here. A lot of damage from both sides here. Camille does drop as well, but Mudkip dies. In the back, off screen to Kha'Zix. This is just an overfight again. Advantage goes to Big Dogs. They may just run it down mid or just off for the Baron. We'll see. Looks like yeah, mixed calls here. What will they do? All right, looks like they opt for the Baron. <laughs> looks like there's a little bit of disagreement. 
Oh, I think this is fine. They can, I mean, they're still ahead. They just use this to break the base. I mean, they could have done inhib and then risk a 50 50 at Baron, which is like, why bother? So I think the Baron yeah, call is something they want to do. It does look like Kane's fine. Be... <laughs> that hurts to see. Yeah. You know, tilt, tilt might be settling in. Who knows? Uh, either way, this is a pretty, pretty hard. Oh, a borderline unplayable game for CSU. They really wanted to be in the driver's seat to, you know, with these ground fighting gauges to set up sieges with their poke comp. And with Baron on the play, poke comps just kind of die with Baron uh, taken. Oh, man. I mean, anything's yeah. possible. I mean, CSU can hit, you know, assuming they hit the god combo, I mean, they will win a fight. It's just really hard to find those. Yeah, with over a 10k gold difference right now, usually I like to call a game uh, unwinnable at about 10k gold because that's the point in which like <laughs> you're snowballing pretty hard and it's a, it's kind of hard to throw the lead by then. It's it's possible. Yeah, so, yeah, so the question comes down hard. to can big dogs close it out, right? Are they going to choke a 10k gold lead? I don't know. I, I really doubt it, but they let's see them execute this end cleanly assuming csu recomposes here and doesn't face check randomly zoe looks like she wants to though kha'zix eased forward onto the morgana black ship comes out pantheon sun disconnects they're looking for the fight i don't think you do this they have to back up the malphite over here so ulti onto the kha'zix he doesn't actually hit another they blow up the kha'zix right away do they have the damage to actually win this fight though big camille q onto the zoe and huge Sindra ER under three people that get blown up. This is going to be Big Dog's fight yet again. I don't think you look for that. I really don't. I think you want to sit in base, wait for them to try to seize, and then hit them while they're grouped. Oh, well. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Regardless. It, it, it was just, like, misplays. It's small misplays. And I feel like I don't want to put the blame on anyone. But this Malphite has been uh, making small misplays by going in, ulting solo, and just kind of missing opportunities to get the bigger team fight ulties. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he is a crucial piece. You do want those ultimates to be hitting correctly every time.